Hey guys, I am here with Clint Moore from Art Chaos. Now you guys are battling it out for first place against Impact. Impact won the last tournament. You fought them a lot in the Millennium Series and everything. Kind of give us your history with this team, having battled them so many times. It's gone back and forth over, over the years. You know, they win matches, we win matches, they win tournaments, we win tournaments. Um, but obviously this is this is the first uh, final in the PSP for, for both of us together, so it should be an interesting uh, next hour. It should definitely be interesting. I don't think it'll be an hour, no. but maybe 20 minutes, yeah. yeah. 20 minutes. But um, so what, you both are such strong teams, this is really anyone's game. What do you think it's going to come down to here? Individual mistakes. I think the team, what makes the less individual mistakes, will win the tournament. No, so. What kind of individual mistakes have you been seeing on this layout this weekend? <sighs> People losing gunfights uh, at the wrong time, maybe playing a little bit too aggressive um, at the wrong time. It's, it's, it's so difficult now. It's uh, literally anyone's game. Absolutely. Okay, stay tuned, guys. We're looking to see who's going to be first place in the champion bracket. Impact again or Art Chaos could take it. Stay tuned. When you look at the roster Art Chaos fields, you would think that they would be in the running for the PSB Series title heading into the West Coast Open. But after working their way out of the Challengers division by winning the first event, they fell apart at the Mid-Atlantic Open, losing every game. Once again back in the Challengers division for the third event in Chicago, they mowed through everyone again, only losing one game in the prelims. Art Chaos is now back with the best teams on planet Earth, and there is no reason to think that they shouldn't start contending for Champions Division wins. Their three main attackers, Konstantin Fedorov, Miska Kiesnev, and Alexander Biernikov are some of the best players ever to play the game. And back player Sergei Sonaiskov is currently the highest ranked player on the team. Our Chaos also has Axel Godin, the best front snake player from France, and a cast of other exceptional players brought together in order to win tournaments. And they could do just that if they play up to their potential here at the West Coast Open. All right, so here we go. The most important game of the tournament, Edmonton Impact, taking on Art Chaos. I'm Andy Marshall with Chris Osoy and Todd Martinez. This is the last game of the tournament. Edmonton Impact, they won the last event. They took second at the second event. Art Chaos underperformed all year long, and this is their chance at redemption. Todd, what do you think about this matchup? I really like the way both of these teams are playing out here. Edmonton Impact is definitely riding high this season, winning every tournament out in Europe and coming out here and winning the last event. So, you know, these guys are playing at the top of their game right now. They're really gelling as a unit. But Art Chaos, we've seen this unit in this position before. Konstantin Fedorov, Alexander Biernikov, Mishka Kanyazev, and, of course, big Sergei Solnyshkov out there, and Pavel Lukashuk getting in and doing work for Art Chaos. Came back this season, we expected to see a lot from them. And here they are in the stage where we expected to see them this season. Can they get a win on the board and play spoiler to Edmonton Impact's uh, successful run that they got going right here? So many big names on Art Chaos. And man, when they put that team together in the off season, and you know, they've been in Europe for a couple years just stomping people out. Well, they got all the best players that have ever played for Moscow or Legion. They're on the same squad. And we are just about to roll here. So is it going to be Edmonton Impact? They're on your left-hand side. Or is it going to be Art Chaos on the right-hand side? Off the break, Art Chaos. Looks like they lose a body on the D side. And it looks like they lose another one. So two bodies dropping early for Art Chaos. Mishka and Biernikov coming out right now for uh, Art Chaos. They do bounce Justin Cornell coming out to that corner. And he's going to make them pay as he dips into this snake. We've seen uh, Edmonton Impact all weekend long go out wide on that Dorito side early. This time coming out wide on the snake side. Trying to catch Art Chaos by surprise. Art Chaos almost picks him up, but unable to. But we've been watching uh, Art Chaos all weekend. You know, lose bodies and continue to fight. They lose another body 
as Sergei Solnyshkov gets shot off the Dorito side. Just one body left alive now. It is Lukashuk here in the snake side corner. And it looks like our chaos is going to concede the point. So the first one is going to go to Edmonton Impact. So nice job by Edmonton Impact here. Convincingly, too. Playing very, very well. Yeah, and so uh, just about 55 seconds on that, fir on that first point. It's 20 minutes in regulation time. This is a race to seven points here in the PSP Champions Division. These two high-power teams throwing down and such successful stories for Edmonton Impact just nonstop this year, man. And it was such, it was crazy because in the offseason, uh, when they went to the well and, and had to pick up a bunch of new players when they lost some players to Houston Heat, they picked up Nick Laval there on your screen. They picked up Danny Park. We haven't seen much of Danny Park out here. Nick Laval definitely starting to get some reps out there, though. But th that's not the story. The story is the core of Edmonton Impact. The guys that have been on the team for a while are just playing such phenomenal paintball. So we're going to be right back here. Stick with us. We'll see if RKS can get back in this matchup. Okay, they're going to do the 22 and the 44 guys. Okay. He ran. He ran. See, you heard it, though. Okay. So that's how come I came over here. What do you think? I lose. Yeah. Hear me? They don't see the Yep. 30 seconds! <laughs> hey, they're gonna try to test you on that. So if I get a ring for the front of the bowl, straight. So, slight technical issue there, but yeah, man, we're in the pits there, and you can see the intensity. Such intense pits there for Edmonton Impact as, uh, you know, so much emotion goes into that squad. And I think that, honestly, you know, Todd, Chris, you guys have played on some, you're emotional players, you've played on emotional teams before. How do you, how important do you think that is? I mean, something, you know, our chaos aside, they have much more of a methodical pit, but when anytime we cut to Impact's pit, those guys are fired up. I, I've always been pretty calm across the board. Pretty yeah, much. whatever. Yeah, I try and keep a, <laughs> I try and keep a pretty level head. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're right, you're right though, Maddie. I mean, uh, calm, collective, but you gotta, oh, here, looks like a flag can be thrown. Possibly, no, Art Chaos getting out on the far side of the field, spread across the back, Maddie. But like you said, calm, cool, collective. It's all about coaching. Yeah, I mean, I, I would not describe the Impact's pits as calm, cool, collected. <laughs> uh, de definitely effective. They're definitely effective, but none of those other three adjectives are would play into consideration. Um, but, you know, it's all about what works, and that's what's been what, working what, what for get, What gets you up? What get, you you want to be calm, collective, or like me and smash things and scream? Well, it, <laughs> I like yeah, both. To each their own. Hey, to each their own. It, it makes me feel better. To each their own. <laughs> so right now, it looks like two bodies coming off of Justin Cornell. I'm sorry, two, bo two bodies from Impact. Justin Cornell and Zane Yakmet coming off. Pavel Lukashuk shooting Justin Cornell. Miska Keznev. Uh, getting out uh, Zane Yakmek. So right now the advantage goes to our chaos. They have four bodies alive out there on this field. And now just two bodies left alive for Everton Impact. This is our chaos's chance to get back in this match right now. Yeah, Joshua Met taking the walk over there. Sergey Solnyshkov bouncing all the way out here to the snake side corner. And Rainy Stanzak picks him up, engaged in a gunfight. Justin Rabakov getting one from the Dorito side of the field. He comes walking off and Impact gonna go ahead and blow the horn and concede that point as Art Chaos started really attacking on that Dorito side. Man, I tell you what, haven't seen many people get so many kills off that Dorito side as Konstantin Fedorov uh, this weekend. You we were talking about Colt Roberts earlier, you know, and having him having 15 kills in that last game. Um, I was looking at that stat earlier about Konstantin Fedorov's kills uh, this event, and he just had a ton out there. So, good game, 1-1 one, one ball game right here, 128 till the next point starts. We'll be right back after these messages. Hey, get this one, Greg. Dorito Corner, running and gunning. All right, Justin, you got eight. Hey, hey, do you guys want me
Penalties have not played any sort of factor so far in this matchup. Both teams are going to be five strong to start this point. It's all tied up at one apiece. Impact on your right. Our chaos on your left. And good cross field breakout here for and strong side on the snake for our chaos. And it looks like they keep five bodies alive. And it looks like their back player on the snake side got bounced on his run out. What a, what a good chaos. field for both teams though. I mean right there, Impact taking the walk. One player going down on Impact. That's Josh Amet. Man, I tell you, Art Chaos is rolling the dice coming out here to the snake side. Catching a lot of bounces. He's getting shot a bunch too, but he's getting out here. Uh, Sergei Solnyshkov getting shot, trying to make a bump up the Dorito side. And Todd just got some information from the pits. It looks like Zach Yakimak has uh, strained his groin and will be out for the remainder of the event. I was going to say, we haven't seen him in a while. Oh, and you know what? And I called that, Maddie. You had to say no penalties, and I, I called that. Major penalty now on, on just, impact. On Justin Rabikoff. Major penalty, which is... That's two-minute major. So, yeah, two-minute major penalty for the next minute and 50 seconds. Impact is going to have to play down a body regardless of whether or not they win and lose the point. And Malloy scrambling, hanging that flag. So nice work there as he gets it done. And now Impact going down one. And not only do they go down a point, two unanswered by Art Chaos with 16.42 to play. And also, they will be uh, down a body for the next minute and 43 seconds. So, uh, a lot of pressure right now on Edmonton Impact to see if they can win two in a row. They won the last event in Chicago, historically the second har hardest event to win after World Cup. But you know what? I'm, we might have to start uh, putting this event up in that, in that mix. Because, I mean, if you have teams like Dynasty Infamous and Shock not even making it to the, the Champions Division, and the bracket of death and all the craziness that we have seen out there, we might have to start <laughs> adding the West Coast Open into one of the hardest events to win. First of all, every PSP event is, t is difficult to win because we have the 20 best teams in the world throwing down. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. Stick with us. Getting a look into the Art Chaos pits, rubbing their chins right now. <laughs> Getting ready to roll here for this next one. But they are up a point right now against Edmonton Impact with 16.42 to go. So tons of time left in this game. We just got rolling here in the 20 minutes of regulation time. And you know, I like what you said, Maddie. This, this actually could be one of the hardest tournaments to win. Why? There's no variables. This is straight up paintball, no mud, no dirt. It's just great weather. Good teams, good grass, and a lot of good paintball. So yeah, definitely, Chris. Tripling up that back center is our chaos. And uh, they end up getting shot, but we're looking behind right now for Edmonton Impact. Oh, and Edmonton Impact evens up, gets that body back on the break. They shoot Sergei Solnyshkov uh, on that triple stack in the snake side can. So 117 left to go on that penalty before Justin Rabikoff gets out. Art Chaos with a 2-1 lead. 16 minutes left to go in this game. And both squads running with their main guys, Zane, Yakimek, Cornell, Wimet, Rainey, Mishka, Pavel, Fedorov, and Bjernikov. And Bjernikov gonna get shot from across the field. What a shot. I think he might have got shot on that bounce shot looking on the inside. Because nobody out wide unless Joshua Met wrapped on him. But I don't think he can even see that that body from there. If you're standing in that tower uh, where Wamet and Mishka are, if you shoot the inside of that tall Dorito tower, it will bounce directly into that snake side can. If you guys looking on the inside, we've seen tons of people get shot there all weekend. But right now, Impact running on that penalty, Maddie. 20 or 15 seconds left in that penalty. Well, they need to get that body back, man. Desperately fighting for this victory here at the West Coast Open. Now Impact making their move here into the snake. And Justin Rabikoff is trying to get out of the box. Only looking at three bodies for our chaos right now. 15 minutes to go. And here comes Justin Rabikoff out of the box. Justin Cornell. 
going to dive into that 50 snake. But taken off down the Dorito side, Mishka gets into that Dorito too. After getting one kill, he's still got Fedorov with him. Is that Fedorov or is, yeah, Fedorov is in that wing over here on the snake side. But Lukashuk taking the walk for Chaos right now, down to two bodies, four on two. Impact need his points right here. Two to one, 14-25 left in this game. So can Konstantin Fedorov and Miska Kiesnev, uh get it done here and try to uh, put another point on the board? It's not looking good though for our chaos. Four bodies left alive for Edmonton Impact. You can see by their body language and dominant field position over here on the snake side of the field, really putting the pressure on the last two players left alive for our chaos. And Mishka, you know, we saw Mishka do this before, just get a bunch of kills, jump into that Dorito too and start peeling bodies off. But it's gonna be tough as Impact has two bodies over here on the snake. There's Mishka Kinyazev on your screen right there. Coming out low from that Dorito 2. Putting paint back in on the snake. And Fedorov getting shot out of that wing. Tough a, position for him to play. Yeah, and uh, not you can't really say that's a bad death. I mean, looking at a lot of a lot of guns, the fact he's even alive was a good thing for our chaos, but it's tough to hide when those angles start to increase and decrease on you. So right now, 13, 19 to go. And Edmonton Impact is gonna tie this game up and they get that body out of the box. Both teams will be at full strength for this next point. This is exactly what we expected to see out of a finals match between these two teams, back and forth. Two to two tie here. Both teams riding their top five players. All these guys just been getting it done all weekend long. And we are in for a good one out here. Lots of exciting finals matches so far. The Revo Camp, a lot to be proud of. Getting two wins. Check out this replay. There's Mishka on your screen. There's Fedorov getting shot. As Mishka leans out the backside trying to shoot Justin Cornell and Zane Yakimek coming down. So our event fantasy score leaders. Wow, nothing but I, a I would, sea of our chaos jerseys. I was gonna say, that's a lot of purple, <laughs> actually. Yeah, Konstantin Fedorov with 9,400 points. <laughs> Leading with 57 total kills. Alexander Biernikov, 6,700 points, 37 kills. Sergei Solnyshkov, 6,600 points and 36 kills. And Mishka Kinyazev, 6,300 points. 33 kills. The top four players are all Art Chaos players. And the other guy, the Frenchman Fabrice Colombo, plays for Moscow Red Legion. 6,000 fantasy points, 37 kills, and 43 points. But every time we see Konstantin Fedorov out here just stacking kills, 57 kills in five games. Here, you know, playing the sixth game of the event. I expect more of him, actually. I mean, <laughs> just having a monster game out there, you know, or a monster weekend. Obviously, I'm joking. Uh, he's a phenomenal player. So here we go. About to rock off for this next point here. 13-15. So still a lot of game to play. It's all tied up into a piece. Impact is on your left-hand side. Our chaos on your right-hand side, but a body dropping early. Two bodies dropping early for our chaos. So this is Edmonton Impact's chance to go up by one. Fedorov and Lukashuk getting shot by Zayn Yakimek and Justin Rabikoff. And again, uh, Impact is down the MVP from the last event, Zach Yakimek. So that is definitely a big hit to the lineup. That's what. That's why it really helps you to have a lot of depth, dog. Yeah, and man, these guys are getting it done out here on the break. Edmonton Impact is getting bodies every single point. Always striking first. And you know, when you play with the lead, then it just makes it so much more comfortable when you're out there gun battling. If you're playing the lead, you know, it just increases your confidence. And jumping out to that Dorito, uh, Dorito one, Joshua Met getting in there alive, making smart bumps. All weekend we've seen impact get good kills on the break and then make smart, crisp bumps, control people with their guns, hold lanes and shoot fillers. 
Here comes Justin Rabakoff on the offensive. Out of that can, into the wing on the snake side. He's got Justin Cornell behind him. Mishka Kinyazev in that cake on the Dorito side for Art Chaos. He's got Sergei Solnyshkov with him. Sergei going to run all the way to the corner. We've seen that move a lot from him coming across into that corner and then start charging down the Dorito side. Art Chaos again in that wing on the snake side trying to prevent anybody from coming down the snake side, but that's Alexander Beardnikov laying down there. Sergei Solnyshkov jumps up into Dorito too. That's Justin Rabakov on your screen. There's the lineup for Impact. That's Zane Yakimek, Rainy Stanzak, and Josh Wamet over there in that Dorito. Josh Wamet shooting across his body over at Beardnikov on the snake side. Number 81 having a stellar year for Edmonton Impact. A huge reason playing that Dorito side. Huge reason why they've had so much success here in the PSP and in Europe. Really stepping up. Josh Wamet, Zach Yakimek, who is out with a groin injury. Zane Yakimek and Justin Cornell, the original Edmonton those, Impact players. Those take a little while to heal, right, Todd? I mean, I think you had one back in the day. Yeah, it'll be fun. That's easy. <laughs> yeah, not as bad as, me, say, Brian Greenspan's knee injury. Oh, yeah. in the face. <laughs> nice shot across the field. But, yeah, you're right. Hey, knee injuries, I mean, I'm, I lived it. It uh, pretty much cost me my career, not going to lie. But thank God I got a career up here with you guys. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, Justin so Cornell. Ten minutes left about the halfway mark here in this matchup, and these teams have fought to a standstill, too to two, but Edmonton Impact not losing a body here in this point. And right now, it's gonna go uh, three to two in favor of Edmonton Impact with uh, Zane Yakimek, Justin Cornell, Josh Wilmet, Justin Rabikoff, and Rainey Stanzik all combining to win that point for their team. Looking really solid right now. Here, this game brought to you by Die Precision. Figures of the DM series of markers. And so, such a such a close game here but if you're looking at the overall event leaders this is just for this event marcelo margot moves up a couple ranks to take second to archie montemayor but here at this event number one second sam monville from houston heat i love uh, sam monville brian smith was able to represent for tampa bay damage along with jason edwards and rainy stanzik so the only player still out here in the top five for the overall rating leaders from this event is rainy stanzik Man, where's Nick Sloviak on that list? I keep picking him for my fantasy team, and I, I, I don't see him on this list of here. However, Nick Sloviak is sitting about third in the overall rankings on his fantasy team. So, well, he's yeah. sitting, Nick Sloviak. So what's he's five feet from us. So <laughs> yeah, we have Nick Sloviak up hey here man, in the broadcast. Shoot somebody us. for me, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, actually what's crazy is out of, out of all the quick picks, somehow, some way, Nick Sloviak is uh, ranked third <laughs> out, out of everybody, which is a lot. And, and you're, you're probably still 1,000 points in front of everybody anyway, man. <laughs> I haven't been, I, I haven't even had a chance to look at my I team I don't have yet, to. But. I already know. <laughs> so it looks like a, a timeout is being called here. About two minutes and 15 seconds to go before the start of this next point. Edmonton Impact in the lead. Three to two is the score. We're going to be right back here. Stick with us. just a field. This is my home. This isn't just a team. This, this is my family. This isn't just a sport. This is a way of life. This isn't just a league. This is the MSXL.
Looking at Dave Baines on your screen right now for Edmonton Impact. One of the most legendary careers ever is that man on your screen. He's played for pretty much every top team uh, for the past decade. And right now, really helping guide and Edmonton Impact along with Bart Yakimek, the owner of the squad and the coach of that team. But, you know, it's just, it's a testament to how good Zach and Zane Yakimek, Joshua Met, Justin Cornell, uh, the, you know, the guys that have been around on that team since the beginning and how well that they have played. Uh, to and also, you know, to gravitate and be good people to, you know, to to bring more good players around them and and have those people want to stay. And and how far have they come? I mean, they they weren't always this good. I mean, they're really good now. Um, but man, what what a what a good story, man. Yeah. These guys are just really good guys. Coming out uh, of the great family. Yeah, coming out of the far north of Canada. Uh, I, and frozen and frozen tundra. The frozen tundra of Canada, <laughs> and still somehow some way able to make a dominant paintball team over the years. And having one of those just amazing years that you just dream about when you begin to play the game. So on the breakout here, looks like five bodies alive. No, Joshua Mech gets shot for Edmonton Impact. And oh. Lucas Shuk taking the walk on Art Chaos's side, Todd. Yeah, for the first time, Art Chaos actually gets the early advantage, and then Lucas Shuk gets shot out of his spot. So four on four here. Edmonton Impact now with the one point lead. And it is up to that big four of Art Chaos. As Justin Rabikoff gonna get one in the goggles. Might, I think that might have been from Mishka. Art Chaos, their four bodies trying to get, get that point back. And Zane Yakimek getting shot, trying to fill over to uh, the snake side. Rainy Stanzak and Justin Cornell gonna have to lock it up. Oh, major penalty, Todd. Wow. Oh, wow, major penalty. Rainy wow. Stanzak getting a major penalty right there. I'm not sure how many people I've seen run by the flag and drop it or miss it or something this weekend. I've, it's probably like once every other point, but Rainy Stanzak getting a major penalty, Maddie. Now it's going to be 4-2 to and, I mean, 3-3. Uh, three, three. Well, tied up game. Well, that basically opened the door for Art Chaos. And the problem with the majors is they stay on the clock the whole time. So, you know, and they didn't worry, weren't able to suck any of that time off. So a minute and 56 seconds to play here. Or, I'm sorry, uh, on that penalty still for Rainey Stanzik. And that was a big pickup for Edmonton Impact. He's been a big contributor for them. But here in the finals, you're looking at this replay on your screen. And there was Lucas Shuk walking off for Art Chaos. And now we're back here in the pits. So here we go. Eight minutes, 53 seconds to go. All tied up at three apiece. Anyone's game at this point. So is our chaos gonna step up here and finally win a tournament? And with that high powered lineup, that's the, we expected them to be, if not in the finals, at least threatening all year long. But, you know, finally living up to their potential. So, you know, good, good job by them. And right now here fighting to a standstill in this uh, war of attrition with Edmonton Impact. But this definitely gives Todd, this gives our chaos the advantage big time right now with a tie game, only a little bit less than nine minutes left to play. If our chaos takes advantage of this power play, they could put a couple points on the board and, and then maybe lock it down. It's gonna be tough for Edmonton Impact to get back in it. But if Edmonton Impact can whip their guns around and get a quick kill, even up that body count, then they got a chance to. Yeah, we've seen Edmonton uh, Impact shoot people on the break all weekend on both sides of the field. So, you know, if you're Art Chaos, you know, you got to dig hard out here and don't give up that advantage right away. Try and get a kill and then attack quickly and see if you can get a couple points off of this major. Oh, and there it is. Alexander Biernikov getting shot on the break with Justin Cornell running out to that snake side corner. He gets shot. Justin Rabikoff, he's going to come out to the snake and get in there alive. So it was just three bodies left alive for Edmonton Impact. But they shoot two bodies for Art Chaos on the break. Justin Cornell, what a move to run out to that corner and shoot back up the middle to catch Alexander Biernikov standing there in the open. And big move, big fill by Sergei Solnyshkov to get out here to the snake side corner, recognizing that Justin Rabikoff was in the snake. Rainy Stanzak still pacing back and forth in that box, trying to figure out where he's gonna go. That's Justin Rabikoff on your screen right there, shooting on the inside of that third snake section, putting paint back in on Fedorov. And Sergei Solnyshkov getting shot 
out of that snake side corner. Justin Rabakoff in the 50. He's going to shoot Mishka. And there goes the horn. 55 seconds left still on that major. Art Chaos going to concede the point and save that time. Wow, that's a huge win for Edmonton Impact, Todd. That right there was a huge coaching move. Excellent call by Edmonton Impact to get Justin Cornell because every time we've seen Art Chaos on a power play, they stack bodies three in that can and go heavy guns up. So Justin Cornell makes the move all the way out to the snake corner on the break, shooting back up the middle and shot Alexander Biernikov after he only got about three or four balls out of his gun. Well, you know, we had just talked about that before the start of this point that, you know, and honestly, this is one of the reasons that uh, that San Antonio X Factor was able to win the World Cup is they had kind of reformed how they looked at penalties. When you get a penalty, what it does is it puts you down a body and uh, it puts the other team on a power play. So that's 20 percent less firepower for you. But if you can whip your gun right around and get a kill, it evens up the body body count. And then not only that, it kind of starts to mentally erode the confidence of the opposition. And, uh, and that's what Edmonton Impact just did right there. Look really good doing it. And now they're up by one, even though they still have 55 seconds left on their penalty. Yeah. That, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of time on this kind of field, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, if, 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 uh, if our chaos can, you know, it, it, just, it all comes down to who's going to actually execute. Who's going to execute? That's what it comes down to. So, you know, and that's that's the thing with, with our chaos is that, you know, we've seen them execute in the challenges division. The one time they were in the champs division before this event, weren't able to execute at a field layout that was very similar to this. So it's actually really good for our chaos. They were to come out here and they made the finals. But, you know, now with the one body advantage, I mean, come on. It's so still you're playing five on four, you know, so they have the advantage. They have to capitalize on that. You know, they got they got a gift from the paintball gods. You have to capitalize on that if you want to win tournaments. <laughs> well, win, lose, or draw, I mean, they're playing for first and second right now. Art Chaos um, coming out of the woodwork and just playing very, very well. Good paintball right now, to be honest with you. Yeah, they're not the team to be happy about taking second place, just making the finals, though. So on Yeah, the that, breakout, that's, that's, that's a good point, Todd, actually. Justin Cornell getting out wide again, making it to that snake corner. He's got Justin Rabikoff with him. Sergei Solnyshkov recognizing that he's got less guns up on that Dorito side, goes out to the Dorito side corner, then jumps up into Dorito one. Three bodies over there. Konstantin Fedorov gonna take his spot, going to that tall temple on the Dorito side, battling heads up. Lukashuk bumping out here to the snake side temple. Sergei Solnyshkov gonna stand up tall on that Dorito two. Konstantin Fedorov launching up the middle. Justin Cornell able to get into the snake as Alexander Birnikov, that's Fedorov on your screen right there. Oh, Justin Ravikoff getting shot for Edmonton Impact. So that's going to take a body off, another body off for them. And uh, but it looks like Pavel Lukashuk just got shot too. So it is uh, four on four right now. Oh, Rainey Stanzak getting out of the box alive. Zane Yakimek making a bump back, and he gets shot in the head by Sergei Solnyshkov standing in that 50 Dorito. Konstantin Fedorov dealing with Justin Cornell over here in the snake, and it looks like Rainey Stanzak and Joshua Met are both going to get shot, but not after Sergey does a ton of damage over there. Just Justin Cornell left alive in this snake bunker over here facing Konstantin Fedorov, and he is going to get Justin Cornell with that last shot. So Edmonton Impact able to burn off that penalty. But Art Chaos going to win the point, so we're going to keep it even here, 4-4 four to four, with 6-11 left to go in this game. We Matty, who's got the momentum right now? Oh, man, I don't know. We couldn't ask for a better game for this final matchup here at the West Coast Open. Uh, you know, the penalty is now off for Edmonton Impact. You might have to say just because they won that last point, you have to give the momentum to Art Chaos. Uh, but if I'm Edmonton Impact, when I get back in that box, if I was on that team, what I would be saying to everyone, hey, we're back at full strength now. I'd be clapping it up. I'd be like, let's go, guys. We got five guys on the field right now, so let's play clean. Let's go out and try to win this next point. But to be honest, you know, with the way that these teams have played this event and uh, with the way they're playing in this game, really, truly just flip a coin, man. It's, it's anyone's game right now. But it does come down to execution. You have to execute, and you have to get out there, make your spots, and contribute here. And uh, we'll see what happens. We'll be right back after this.
first picked up a paintball gun when I was nine. I used to stand around at the field and stare at the Ironman players, hoping for a shot. I earned my way onto the team when I was 15. We won two world titles. When I blew my knee out for the second time, the doctor told me I'd never play again. But I refused to let go of my dream. I'm an Ironman, and paintball is my life. So there's our chaos on your screen right now. Our chaos and Edmonton Impact fought to a standstill so far. Six minutes and four seconds remain here in this final matchup. Who's going to win it? Off the break, looks like our chaos. Oh, running ref is coming in to check out our chaos. And major penalty. See major, major, minor. Or minor, and it's going to be a minor penalty. So our chaos drawing a penalty. Sergey, so nice goal. Ends up to getting uh, getting shot and playing on, which pulls Mishka out. So now, and also Lukashuk, man, who Lukashuk. is really struggling, man. Lukashuk is not having a good game here. Oh, man. Lukashuk. So now two bodies left alive for our chaos, and this could give the advantage, or does give the advantage to Edmonton Impact here. But if our chaos can fight through the next 34 seconds, then they're going to get that body out, which will tie up the body count. Four to four game right now. Longest five minutes of everybody's life. And here comes Biernikov making the move all the way down to the 50 Dorito. Joshua Met coming out to the small cake, trying to get a shot on him. Alexander Biernikov on the offensive, down bodies. Joshua Met gets shot, so Justin Cornell starts filling over with the penalty about to come off. Vishka's about to get out of that box. Is anybody shooting the box? No, Mishka uh, gets out of there alive. Yeah, then he had to scramble to make it out alive. So now a three on two situation as Konstantin Fedorov is filled over here to the snake side. There you see on your screen, that's Alexander Biernikov. Or no, I'm sorry, that's Mishka Kinyazev sitting in that Dorito. Dorito one, protecting Alexander Biernikov up there in the 50 Dorito. Three on two, Justin Cornell is over in the Dorito side tower. Rainey Stanzak has bumped across into the snake side wing. He is Three. gunned up. There's Justin Cornell. Three on two right now. Rainey Stanzak and Justin Cornell left alive for Edmonton Impact. Four minutes and six seconds to go. Our Chaos has a one body advantage here. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. And uh, it's, things have died down just slightly. As, uh, as man, these guys know what's at stake. These are seasoned vets. Every single person on the field right now has been in uh, big games before and playing for wins. So they definitely know the score. They know the body count, and they definitely know how much time is left. So our chaos is going to see if they can work out something with their one body advantage. And you couldn't ask for three better players for them. Is it Sergey Malloy and Konstantin Fedorov on the field for them? Rainey Stanzik and Justin Cornell, no strangers to this situation. Yes, Maddie, and here's the thing. There is only three minutes and 25 seconds left in this game, and it's tied, so neither coach is going to want to blow the horn and concede the point here unless bodies start dying, and it looks like they're going to lose the point. They're going to want to try and save as much time as possible. Yeah, it may come down to this point, Todd. This may be the differential here, and then what decides this win or loss for these two teams. Hunting in the center, Mishka. On your screen, right hand side, you can see he's gonna now go, oh, he's gonna commit. He's gonna, oh, you know, I thought he completely committed, but no, he stops at a bunker. Oh. Rainey gets shot in the pack. Wow, so Mishka was able to get that shot, and Cornell, so Impact needs to blow the horn, they do. And they preserve a little bit of that time left. Two minutes and 47 seconds to go here. Art Chaos is going to take a one point lead, and what a redemptive win this would be for Art Chaos as they have struggled here in the PSP this year. They dominated in the Challengers division when they've been down there, but the last time that we saw our chaos in the Champions division was the Mid-Atlantic Open on a field layout very similar to this, and they lost every single game. But our chaos trying to redeem themselves here and take a win against the team that basically the team of 2014 in Edmonton Impact. Good call, yeah. Todd. I mean, you, you called that out of the, right, right away. As a coach, uh, obviously, um, Blowing the horn, conserving the time. 2.47 left. Down one point. Eminent impact. Our Chaos playing really well, Matty. Uh, both these teams have played well, but our Chaos with a slight one-point lead. Seizing the advantage there in that last one. 
Two minutes and 47 seconds to go. Both teams are going to be at full strength here. And we're going to be right back with potentially the conclusion of our last match. Potentially the point that could decide who wins or loses this game. Stick with us. So tense situation right here. One point separates these two teams. Our chaos with a slight lead, a little bit under three minutes to go here. So, uh, I mean, honestly, you know, with the one point lead and under three minutes, if our chaos can get a good break, maybe shoot somebody from impact off the break, they could win this tournament. They're both playing really well. So, I mean. Yeah, I don't know, we'll see. But let's check in with Lauren Kelly here before we get to this next point. All right, Art Chaos has the lead, a one-point lead here against Impact. Now, you guys took that timeout. I heard you telling them uh, they have the advantage when you guys stay in your spots and you need to move. So are we going to see you switching up your strategy here going into this next point? Yeah, it's not so much that. It's more uh, they're winning. They're beating us on the Dorito side, and it's because we don't have a body looking that way. So it's making it really easy for them to come up that side, even when we're up bodies. So there's two ways to handle that. One, you have a guy shoot cross, which is what we're doing. And the other thing is have our Dorito guys press on them as well. So that's our plan. All right, we'll see if Impact can get some points being a little more aggressive here. Back to you guys. So here we go. About to find out, man. This is getting pretty crazy and pretty tense because it's such a close match. Our chaos. Can they redeem themselves by winning this tournament here? That would be a big mental boost for them heading in to the final tournament of the year in the World Cup most important event of the 2014 season. Nobody's dropping for either team. Best case scenario for Art Chaos. They get out and get all five bodies alive. These guys are the masters at shooting lanes and communicating and switching. And just like Zach Yakimek said, they got to start attacking down that Dorito side. They got Zane out there. Zane pulled up short at the little cake. Josh Bumet looking that way with him. Rainy Stanzak still on the snake side lock. Justin Rabikoff looking across the field, but he's going to have to get going as well. Justin Cornell at that snake temple looking across towards the Dorito side, trying to lock that off, but that's really not going to help them. They need to get up, win a gunfight, and get on the offensive. But Art Chaos with tons of guns focused on Justin Cornell. They've got Lukashuk, Fedorov, and Sergey all cutting down that lane. And the first body to drop is going to come from Edmonton Impact as they lose Zane Yakimek <laughs> two and bodies. Josh Wamet. So two bodies dropping for Edmonton Impact, which is really going to open the door for our chaos because that means that Justin Cornell, Justin Rabikoff, and Rainey Stanzik are going to have to pull a magic trick out of their hats. And, and it's not going to happen. You could probably blow that horn at this point. They started with one. They, had they to, got they, Alexander Birnikov, but Rainey Stanzak also getting shot. And there goes Justin Cornell as Fedorov jumps up. 
in elation, <laughs> pumping his fists in the middle of the field as he knows he's just all but got this thing sealed up as Art Chaos gonna go up six to four with just one minute and eight seconds left to go in this ball game gonna here at the finals of the PSP Riverside West Coast Open. Todd gonna take a minor miracle here for Edmonton Impact to even come back with a minute and eight seconds left, our chaos pretty much just Todd, like you said, has it sewed up here. Six to four is the score. And uh, two points separate these teams. I, I mean, I, I don't know. You, well, I'll tell you what, though. Things are going to get a little bit interesting here as uh, there's no other option for Edmonton Impact. The only thing that they possibly can do is to just cannonball up the field. They're going to have to push aggressively as they possibly can, so look for a big center play, try to break a wedge into Archaos's line, and then try to get out wide. That's the only thing the Impact can do. They're down two points. They have a minute and eight seconds left. I just don't see any other option for them right now. Here's the problem. Them. Throughout the prelims, we saw Impact winning games like this, going to those back spots and winning gun battles out of those back spots. We occasionally saw them come up the middle, get into that Dorito side tower, launch, come through the middle, go and get kills. We have not seen that from them at all this game. In the semifinals, they were launching Zane Yakimek all the way out there to the Dorito side into that corner, and he was getting up the field and getting kills, allowing Joshua Met some freedom. But now they've been just going short, trying to gun battle out of those spots, and they have not been able to get those kills. Todd. They shot a lot of people on the break early early, but not doing it here late in the game when it matters. Todd, I think this has a lot to do with the hunger from the guys from Art Chaos. These are guys that are used to winning tournaments, and they have been playing not just second fiddle, but even way worse than that, back and forth champs and challengers. And I think that Art Chaos finally was like, look, enough is enough. We, we know how this is, we know how this goes. Those guys have played more, more finals than probably any other lineup out there uh, on different teams, but still, they're just, they're over it, and they want to win a tournament. So right now, Edmonton an impact, just like we said, trying to, to knock a wedge into the line of Art Chaos, but they lose Zane Yakimek, and now we have under a minute to play, and Art Chaos one point away from taking this victory here. And you just gotta play smart, stay alive, 43 seconds. They have that two point lead. Here comes Edmonton Impact. Justin Cornell getting shot. He trades out with Sergey. Misha busts out to the Dorito. He shoots up Justin Rabakov. And Rainey Stanzik is going to town over here. Snake side, but has to throw his body away finally, trying to take out the snake. And I think that that is finally going to do it here. And we are going to crown another team as champions here in the PSP. So first event was infamous. Second event, Dynasty. Third event, third event, Impact. And now... Another team has finally taken the victory here in the hardest paintball competition on earth, and it is Art Chaos. And what a redemptive moment for the boys from Art Chaos as they win this game 7-4 against the dominant Edmonton Impact. Up, down, up, down, and back to the top. Art <laughs> Chaos, their big four out there. Mishka Kanyazev, Konstantin Fedorov coming out here and with a dominant performance. Konstantin Fedorov with just a ton of kills this entire event. Mishka Kunyazev steps up and gets nine kills out here. Sergei Solnyshkov, Alexander Biernikov. Those four guys came out here and did everything that they possibly could, proving that they are still four of the best players in this league coming out here and getting a big win for Art Chaos in their first season of the PSP. And I think that that's the point to make right here is that, you know, we had talked about those four core members of Art Chaos and how potent that they have been uh, and how amazingly powerful, that, uh, no matter what team that they played for. You know, Konstantin Fedorov going play for, you know, he came up in, with, with Moscow Red Legion, all those guys did. But then Fedorov became one of the best players on earth came and played for the All-Americans, helped them win some tournaments before that team became defunct. And then Houston Heat in four events out of 10, able to you know put up that 400%. That's ridiculous. No one wins four events out of 10 in the PSP as we've seen four different winners in four tournaments here this year. Such a, a really ridiculously hardcore competition in the Champions Division in the PSP, but yes, finally redeeming themselves, our chaos, as they take this victory 7-4. to four. Hey, and you know what? Uh, you know, it's really hard to get to the top. It's even harder to stay at the top. Hats off to Edmonton Impact for the way that they've been playing all season, especially this event as well. They came out here, they played some serious ball. Nobody knew who was going to win this game. This is why it's so much fun to come out here and watch the Battle of the Titans as these guys went head-to-head, -head, toe toe-to-toe, fist-to-fist, <laughs> however you want to put it, man. This <laughs> Barrel to barrel, ball to ball. 
Whoa. gunfight to gunfight, toe to toe, toe to toe. Yeah, whatever. Throw anything in there, any you know superlative you want. But the point <laughs> of the matter is that uh, our chaos really finally kind of coalesced, and that was the that was the question with our chaos is that they had so many ups and downs this year. But that's what's amazing about this sport is there's always the next tournament. You can always redeem yourself. And so you know we saw some great paintball from so many different teams throughout the 12 games that we saw today. Every single game today meant something. And that's what I love watching uh, on Sunday. That's what I love about watching on Sunday here at the PSP. And you can see, you know, out there on the field, we're not there yet. But, man, our chaos is in that huddle, hugging each other. And uh, such an impressive, uh, impressive performance by them. But, hey, man, hats off to... Uh, to Houston Heat, who was able to maintain their Champions Division spot, along with 187, who has won three relegation games in a row in three tournaments. And hey, you want to know who was the, kind of the heroes of the day for the whole squad, for everybody? Uh, was Revo, though they did not win against X Factor in that Challengers Division final. They lost to him, but uh, Revo 3 won the D3. Revo 2 won D2, and, uh, and then Revo, uh, winning, uh, went undefeated until they met Art Chaos, I'm sorry, until they met X Factor, and still, though, what an amazing performance by that entire squad across three divisions. Yeah, and, you know, really exciting that the second team ended up winning at the buzzer during one-on-ones, you know, running in. Super exciting. Lots of good games out here in the finals. Congrats to all these teams, you know, who made the finals, played on the big stage today, and came out with the trophy. Yeah, so still one tournament left here in the PSP, and it's the most important tournament of the year is the World Cup is going to be going down in uh, six or seven short weeks here. I can't wait. I, lo I love the World Cup. It, if, you, if you've never been to the World Cup, it's like going to Disneyland on steroids. Well, for, for paintball guys. For paintball guys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, make sure you sign your team up for the World Cup. Go to PSBEvents.com. Get your team into the fight, man. And, uh, and also, Notorious winning the D4 final. And uh, AC Dallas taking that D1 final as well, too. So... Let's check in with Lauren Kelly. She has the winners, our chaos. All right, I am with your first place winners for Riverside. Congratulations, guys. How does it feel? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it feels good, especially after our two terrible mistakes and dropping down challengers. But you can see the ch challengers teams right now, they're really strong. They like beat, I mean, let's say right now, Dynasty down. So X Factor play good at the Infamous, so you know, nobody knows what's going to be next. So. Absolutely. Well, coming into this, a lot of people expected you to be super successful right off the bat. And you did go down to the Challengers and come back up and fight your way to this first place win. What have you guys learned being in the PSP and this specific lead that's made you a better team to get this win? Uh, the first of all, we learned how to be together. You know, we back up the days we played together. But right now we are kind of adults, you know, and we're not a child. And we have to like split all of us like one unit. So we did it right now and we want to beat everyone in the World Cup for sure. Oh, very confident. Well, anything you want to say to Impact since you guys are always battling each other across leagues and it, all, it comes down to you two a lot? Um, about myself, I, I really a good friend with Bart and uh, guys like Justin and Dave, so we used to play together. And right now we just learn how to play defensively because they're doing really well. And what we do as well, we're just uh, look, uh, watching the games and we just exactly know what, what they're going to do. it. And we just do not let them slap your shots, that's it. Absolutely. Well, congratulations, guys. You definitely proved yourself here at the PSP. Go ahead and celebrate. You don't have to talk to me. Ah! Oh! Hey. Thank you, guys. You can see some of the highlights from the game. Yeah, I've been definitely celebrating because it's been a really long year for Art Chaos and uh, got so many moments that they've had to mentally deal with and fight through in order to get to this redemptive moment and this victory here at the West Coast Open. And uh, what an amazing game against Edmonton Impact. You know, Impact is an incredibly hard team to beat. Doesn't matter the layout, doesn't matter the league, it doesn't matter what's going on. If you're playing Impact, you're in for a tough matchup. But our Chaos was able to step up and take that victory seven to four. And they did it by, you know, they did it. It was a multifaceted win, Todd. Yeah, I mean, just like uh, Fedorov said down there, you know, we, we had to learn to play defensively, you know, to play against those guys. And, you know, they have had a lot of battles. They've, they've gone head-to-head -head, uh, in the Millennium Series, and obviously Edmonton Impact has came out victorious uh, all those times, winning every single event over there this year. But, you know, just learning, you know, once you pl – playing as a team, using all their guys uh, as a unit, and, you know, just figuring out exactly what they needed to do to finally get one of these wins. And – you know, I thought this field was actually really good uh, for Art Chaos. You know, it kind of 
uh, I think it suited them really well because they shoot really well on the break. Um, they were good attacking when they needed to attack. They were good at defending when they needed to defend. But, I mean, yeah, it's it's a true pleasure to watch these guys play. You know, these guys are, are some of the greats. Konstantin Fedorov, uh, Mishka Kinyazev, Alexander Biernikov, those three guys for years and years now have just been so dominant. And, you know, the emergence of Sergei Solnyshkov, you know, really has just solidified, you know, those three guys. And, you know, it's just amazing to watch these guys play paintball. You know, every time I watch them, they just do more stuff that impresses me. And, uh, you know, I'm happy just to be able to be out here and, and watch, and watch these guys and talk about these guys. And, you know, we knew that they were a solid team. You know, these guys, uh, when they put this team together, the entire league got a little bit worried that they were coming out here into this league. And, and, and this is why. And yeah, this ab is why. absolutely. Well, and finally <laughs> proving it, though, because it had been an open question for a while. It was like, are these guys over it? Or are they ready to win a tournament again? But they are. So congratulations to our chaos. But before uh, we sign out here and end the day here at the 2014 PSP West Coast Open, let's check out some of the highlights from today. Uh, so many big games today. My God. I mean, we started off with uh, 187 and VCK. And VCK, you know, VCK, uh, they, they kind of had a tough go of it here in the Champions Division. Uh, but 187 was able to defeat them. And 187 has just been, boys, has been icing people down in those uh, relegation games. Yeah, they really have. You know, here's San Diego Dynasty, um, who didn't play very well uh, this event and ended up getting relegated. That's Tim Montressor right there standing at the A. LJ Woodley coming up through the middle. And, uh, I mean, he had a heck of a game. That move right there broke open that game for them uh, as they were able to beat Dynasty to stay in the Champions Division. There's Woodley catching a couple balls as well. Uh, Kyle Spica up there in the 50 snake, uh, getting that shot in uh, on Woodley. Yosh Rao, here's him running a flag in, giving that one-hand gangster gat uh, to end that game and keep their hopes alive. But Houston Heat coming back and winning in overtime. And, you know, a couple more highlights from that game. Or, I'm sorry, this is the, the infamous game as infamous loss to Revo in a, a crazy finish, getting a major penalty with under five seconds left to go. Here's Brad McCurley getting bunkered by Kenny Frank uh, right before Revo was able to win that game against <laughs> LA Infamous. Well, and, and the crazy thing... That's a three-play. Well, and, well, and again, that, and that's one of the best stories that we've seen in professional paintball in a long time for a team to come into the Challengers division uh, and only two events in, uh, defeat a team like Infamous in a, in a semifinal matchup to send themselves to World Cup. So I can't wait to see what Revo has to offer because I, I, we were saying this before. If I was on Revo, uh, man, I would literally be playing every single weekend between now and World Cup. I would do everything within my physical power and mental power to try to prepare myself for the test that they are going to, uh, to undertake. And, you know, in Edmonton Impact... We're watching them play Tampa Bay Damage, and they knocked out a really tough Tampa Bay Damage. Tampa Bay Damage was playing some inspired paintball at this event. Yeah, they played pretty good. I thought, uh, you know, Edmonton Impact, you know, really played awesome. That was that Brian Smith play. Yep. One of the best run-throughs that we saw all event long. Brian Smith coming through and taking out a bunch of Edmonton Impact players. Uh, but, yeah, Damage, I, I feel Damage is definitely going to be, uh, you know, Damage is a favorite at every event, but... You know, the thing with damage is they have the same core lineup they've had for a long time. And, you know, when you're playing this game for as long as they've played, sometimes it's tough to summon the will to continue to play at a, at a very high level. But I really felt damage came into this event inspired. I think that they really, really wanted to win this one. Uh, but they just met an impact team that's just having one of those years. Yeah, they really are. There's Konstantin Fedorov. Showing some frustration as he gets shot in the face. And this was that Sergey Sonaiskov run through in the center. We, and we saw a bunch of those run throughs in the center. Yeah, so, and, uh, and that was the thing, man. There were so many opportunities in the center of the field to kind of set the tempo and the pace for the game and, uh, and then kind of open Mike things check, up on Mike the sidelines. One, two, one, two. Yeah, so right here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, so, and as we end the day here on these highlights, and then we're going to have the uh, award ceremony with Lauren Kelly here in a second. But you're seeing there, there's Boom playing against uh, Revo 2. Yeah, yeah, that Boom guy. And uh, he, got the, he got that bunkering in right there, but Bo uh, Revo ended up getting the best of them in the end. 
Here was that move down the middle to go and hang that flag. Did not get the call. Ended up going to overtime, but there were, yeah, made that, that sick move down the middle. That was a sweet move because he cut through the center right there, uh, and he didn't get the call, and it had to go to one-on-ones. And that was uh, one of the most dramatic moments that we were able to see here out of the 36 games total that we saw on this field through three days of competition at the West Coast Open. And this was that one-on-one -on -one right there. That was the first one, got owned. And then, and then this was that comes through, catches him sleeping, grabs nice. a flag. So two in a row for Revo, and then dives it in to get that win. And yeah. that was that D2 final matchup between Revo 2 and Boom. So Revo 3 and Revo <laughs> 2 winning D3 and D2 in incredible performances. And then we move on to that, you know, just from an opposite angle. And then, uh, and then we saw AC Dallas take on LA Collision. Yep, there was uh, Demetrius Ninos. We saw that from him a lot this weekend, running people down, getting there in the snake. I think Billy Bernaccia, if you're sitting there watching at home, you're going to have to fight for some playing time. <laughs> and he, he is watching at <laughs> home. Next you, know, you know he is. You know he's watching at home, too. Ninos handling biz over here for X Factor, getting them back up into the champions division. There is Chris Lloyd for Revo. Yeah, and that was that Revo X Factor game, which was pretty close. But X Factor, um, well, not in the, in the long run, it was all about X Factor. His X Factor, you know, Revo made it interesting a little bit, but X Factor really kind of came out and and said, "Look, I, I, yeah, we went we went down into the challengers division, but it only took us one tournament to get back." And then the final matchup, and there, this is another one of those Revo ones from X Factor here, as that was Meter Ninos running down last pair, yeah, and definitely. Meter Ninos definitely played a, a pretty amazing uh, snake performance for him here in this event. And he needed that. They needed to have that out of him because, you know, I mean, when you have one of your main snake guys get hurt, you need uh, your, your other guy to step up and really kind of carry the weight over there. Yeah, and X Factor's always had a great Dorito push. You know, I think when they got Billy Bernaccia and they got uh, Ninos, that definitely um, really helped them out a lot, you know, because they finally started having a presence over there. You know, Michael Kovar did it for a long time, you know, but it's tough to do it by yourself. You know, when they finally got a couple guys that can play that snake, you know, it definitely helped them out. So. Uh, and Ninos coming out here, you know, doing the job. Um, had Kovar out there with him, Grayson Goff, all those guys played really well. Uh, congratulations to X Factor on winning the Challengers division and getting themselves back up into the Champions League. It's just good to see them finally emerge as a, as a powerhouse team again. You know, I mean, and that's the thing is that, you know, when X Factor, I'm sorry, when our Chaos put their squad together in the offseason, everyone was like, oh my God, our Chaos is stacking this team. It's going to be ridiculous. And, uh, but, Finally proving it to everybody, because that's what it's all about in pro paintball. It does again, we talk about this a lot. It doesn't matter about the names on the backs. It's about who shows up to that tournament ready to perform. Our chaos definitely performed, defeating Edmonton Impact, just having one of those stellar years. But right now it's all about our chaos. So congratulations to them. So we're gonna sign off up here. We're gonna throw it to Lauren Kelly to close out. Thank you very much, guys, for uh, for helping us out and for supporting the sport at its highest level. And every single dollar that you spend on the webcast goes directly to our production budget. So continue to help us spread the paintball gospel. Like I always say, I say it because it's important, man. Paintball is an amazing thing. It, uh, you know, between just the fact that it's very fun, also it's a gigantic mental test. It's like soul school. You know, it really <laughs> it really helps you. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it just it, between the adventure and the, and, the, and and like I said, the test. It's an amazing thing so thank you guys for contributing and uh we'll see you guys at the world cup i can't wait for that one so we're gonna send it off to lauren kelly hey guys i have your first place winners for d1 here ac dallas congratulations guys how does it feel it was awesome a lot of hard work who do you want to thank gi sports planet eclipse exalt social paintball cousins paintball dallas kick and paintball park and cj's paintball park and x factor and vck for two great practices Awesome. I hear you guys whispering a little over here. Did you want to say anything? V Force goggles are really good. <laughs> great. Well, congratulations, guys. First place to DUNAC Dallas. Have a great celebration.
All right, I have Wicked up on the podium. They got third place for D3. Congratulations. Are you guys pretty excited? Yeah, for considering we didn't get to practice the layout. We've been grinding with WC a lot. Um, we had two uh, key bodies get injured last weekend. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad with the turnout that we did. I want to congratulate Royalty uh, and Axe Gang. Um, I want to congratulate the PSP on a great event, all the refs. I want to uh, thank our sponsors, HK Army, uh, Top Shelf Wellness, uh, CC Paintball, SC Village for a great place to practice. Myself, Druck and Miller Roofing, I sponsor the entries. Um, anybody I'm missing, Ethan? Fields. SC Village. SC Village, yeah. CC Paintball. That's pretty much it. You know, we're happy with the, the layout and everything. We had a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, we're so glad you came, and we'll see you at World Cup. Congratulations, guys. This is the Earth. The Earth is beautiful. Earth is where we play paintball. It is important to recycle in order to save the Earth. Do not recycle custom paintball jersey designs. Get what you pay for. Get a fresh original design at rosalife.com. All right, now I have royalty up here on the podium. They got first place in D3. Congratulations, guys. How are you feeling? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's great. Great feeling. Great event. Thank you, PSP. Thank you, APPA. Thank you, Die. Thank you, GI. Awesome. Anyone else you guys want to thank that you might have forgotten? What's, what's on your face there? I got a little whiskers. I don't know. I was a little bored waiting in the, <laughs> in the sun. I'm a little hungry. Tired. All right, well, these guys need to go celebrate because this isn't too exciting. But congratulations. Will we see you at World Cup? Yes, you will. Thank ah, you. There you go. Thanks, all. <laughs> now everyone can customize Empire Paintball's top-level jerseys with the engineered materials, cuts, and types of padding that the pros demand. Choose your colors, add personalized names and numbers, and team and sponsor logos without any hidden design needs. It's all inclusive. Go to tag-customs.com to get started today on your team's custom jerseys.
Hey guys, I am up here with X Factor now. Yeah, th this is X Factor. Those five guys you see running around, they're just so fast that it looks like five guys. And good looking according to Scott Kemp. Just kidding, everyone had to go home. But congratulations guys, you went first place and you're bumping up. How does it feel? Feels great uh, to be back where we belong. Excited for World Cup? Very excited for World Cup. Great answers. Thank you, Dimitri. Anyone you want to thank? We're living. Uh, GI Sports, uh, Alex Martinez, X Factor Paintball Park, Die, shout out to the squad, Eclipse. Mike Tyson, Exalt, Mike Eclipse, uh, Slow Mo, and that'll be it. Anything else from you two? No. No, that's pretty much it. We're excited to be back up there. Yeah. So. Time so to win. have another shot at the World Cup yeah. title. So. Oh, yeah. These are your World Cup champs from last year, so we'll see if they can take it again. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. Thank you.